The following is transcribed. Welcome to Condensed Bat Soup. Now with 66% fewer superheroes than our regular podcast, which makes Condensed Bat Soup even less nutritious, but still just as delicious. We're featuring episodes of The Adventures of Superman without the caped crusaders. Tie on your capes for lots of villainous monologuing, plenty of local history lessons, and daring rescues galore! In this edition of Condensed Bat Soup, we'll continue our journey back to the very beginning of Superman's adventures on the radio with the next two episodes of The Man of Steel's first radio adventure. We'll pick up with the fifth installment, Clark Kent Imprisoned which was originally broadcast on February 21st, 1940. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman. Just a few hours to go before the crack train of the West Coast Railroad, the Silver Clipper, leaves Denver for Salt Lake City, where the mysterious power through its agent, the Wolf, has sworn she will never arrive. And Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet, Superman was last seen being dragged down a flight of steel stairs and thrown into the soundproof room of the Wolf's hideout near the railroad yard. It is late afternoon, verging towards sundown in the world above. And still the gangster Kino works on the unresisting form of Kent, bound and shackled to the wall before him. Hey, listen, you. I'm getting tired of this. How about talking? I've already told you. There's nothing I care to talk about. Wise guy, hey? Okay, we'll see how long you last at this. Open the door, you know. Okay, here comes the boss. Wait till you see what happens now. Well, you know, what luck. No luck at all so far. He ain't doing much talking. He's tough, boss. Still, I was just going to... Let it go, Kino. There's no more time. I did want to know where he got his information, but it won't matter. That's what you think, Wolf. That's what I know, my young friend. What do you mean? Ah, You'd like me to talk, huh? Very well, I don't mind in the least. In a few hours' time, Mr. Clark Kent, the Silver Clipper will leave Denver for Salt Lake. You recall what happened to the locomotive and tender last night? Don't boast, Wolf. You didn't have anything to do with that. They'll find that engine. Possibly. But they haven't found it yet. And let me tell you this, Mr. Kent. They won't find the silver clipper either. Kino. Uh, yeah, boss. We're leaving at once. Uh, well, what about this guy? He'll stay where he is, permanently. What are you going to do, Wolf? Nothing whatever. We shall leave you just where you are, for all time. Or until someone comes down here and finds you, which may take a month or two. Kino, the persuader. <coughs> oh! <laughs> Out like a light. <laughs> and when he comes to... When he comes to, we'll be 20 miles on our way to San Joaquin. Hey, wait, boss. He's plenty tough. What if he breaks out? Breaks out? <laughs> Don't be silly, Kino. The walls are solid sheet steel, three inches thick. Then five inches of concrete. Then more steel. If he breaks out of that, huh, I'll put him in the circus. Okay. Reckon he's safe. Come, Kino. Goodbye, Mr. Clark Kent. You'll forgive me if I do not say I hope we meet again. But we will meet again, and very soon. And thanks for telling me where. On the road to San Joaquin, eh? Well, I'll give you a little while to get clear of town, and then I'll be seeing you, Wolf. <laughs> Handcuffs, eh? It's a good thing for you I wasn't feeling playful. All right, Kino. From now on, things will move. Jump in, boss. Take the lower road to the river, and then up toward the pass. Look, look, Kino. The sun's just going down over the railroad yards. Hey, boss. There she is, the Silver Clipper, just in from Shy. She lay over a while and then hit the line for Salt Lake. And we'll be ready and waiting. Let's go. Twenty minutes. 
That ought to give me time enough to get out of earshot. What was that he said about sheet steel three inches thick? Uh, uh, <laughs> you're a liar, Wolf. Two and a half at the most. Look at those walls bend. Uh, well, you might have kept Clark Kent in a vault like this, but not Superman. Uh, uh, there goes the concrete. And still more steel. Well, I'll just put my foot through that. And that's that. Now, up the stairs. I won't go out in the street. Attract too much attention. Just up to the roof for an easy takeoff. Oh, what's this? A skylight. <laughs> and padlocked. Here goes. <sighs> out into the night in the fresh air. One jump and we're up. Up. And away. Now then, all I have to do is follow his car on the San Joaquin Road. Oh, yes. And a fellow called the Wolf is going to put Clark Kent in the circus. <laughs> Here I come, Wolf. Uh, uh, hey. hey, watch where you're going, will you, boys? Take it easy, Kino. In a moment, we'll be at the crossing of the San Joaquin River. Do you know where that runs? Sure, down through Schooner Canyon Lake to the dam at Wallkill. And do you know how Schooner Canyon got its name? Who cares? Oh, it's interesting, you know. The canyon took its name from an old mining camp, now at the bottom of the lake. I still don't see it why... It was a roaring camp, you know, until they built the dam and turned the canyon into a reservoir. It must have been tough to get to, down in a hole like that. They had a railroad, you know. They broke a tunnel through the canyon wall laid the tracks through the tunnel and down the canyon wall to the camp. Yeah? Ah, now you're beginning to understand. Exactly, Kino. The camp is under a thousand feet of water, but the branch line tracks still lead to the water's edge. Through the tunnel, down the wall. Hey, now listen, you don't think that you can... Wait, what was that? I didn't hear nothing. It sounded like a rushing of wind or wings... High over our heads. Chicken hawk. At night? Well, I don't hear it now, whatever it was. Hey, uh, what about the canyon? Well, Kino, that's where that spare engine went last night. Into the lake? Right into it, Kino. It left the main line after my men had attended to the switch, shut down the grade, roared into the tunnel, and disappeared forever in the waters of Schooner Canyon Lake. Couldn't they stop? No time. And the rails of the branch line were thick with grease. Oh, you can't do it again. It's wholesale murder. What of it? Not losing your nerve, are you, Kino? Look, we're here. Hey, 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 you left the road. Naturally, naturally. We're on the back road above the old junction. Come along, Kino. Well, where are we going? Down the tunnel, just a few yards ahead. I'll show you what's going to happen. Uh, what's the matter? Hey, what's that guy doing over there? One of my workmen, I suppose. I have several. Where? I, I don't see him. He dodged off again. Listen, now, I, I don't like this. Someone's sure to catch on. Who? Who? Don't be a fool, Kino. The only outsiders are the two members of the train crew on the engine. They jumped off last night just in time. What, the engineer? Well, where is he? He'll never jump again, nor will the fireman. Well, where are they? Up on the rocks above the tunnel, shackled down. Later, they'll be found lying dead beside the tracks. Sensation, Kino. Imagine the mystery and the terror. Train crew dead on the tracks. No sign of an accident. No sign of the train. Oh, there he is again. Look, look. Be quiet, will you? What are you talking about? I seen it. A long red cape. He was just flying. You know, you're out of your head. The conductor. That's what the conductor saw. Clearing the line for the continental. The conductor was seeing things, and so are you, Kino. Come along, come along. Here's the tunnel. I... I don't want to go in there. Oh, yes, you do, Kino. I want you to. It's not far, but I want you to see what happens to trains and to people. People? Uh, what do you mean? You're weak, Kino. You see things in the dark. You might be tempted to uh, forget who you're working for. Oh, no, no, never, never, not, not be poor. Well, we'll just make sure of that. Keep going, Kino, until I tell you to stop. devil. The cold and human devil. He's given himself away this time. I'll find those two trainmen. They're just the evidence we need. Where are they? Quick. 
above the tunnel. Good thing I can see in the dark and through rocks. Ah, there they are, chained down to die. But they won't die, not this time. They'll be the witnesses that hang you, wolf. No, it's all right. It's all right, I won't hurt you. Gotta break those chains. Ah. Now, one under each arm. I'll find a ranch house and drop them at the door. They won't know what's happened. I think they crawl there. And then back to get the police. Up! Up! There, you know. We're at the end of the tunnel. Look down the canyon. Gee, it must be a thousand feet across. And would you like to know how deep? 300 feet down to water and a thousand feet more after that. Yeah. The Lake of Schooner Canyon. Uh, what's the time? A flash of light. Uh, 7.15. 7.15. Kino, the Silver Clipper is 20 minutes out of Denver. Twenty minutes out of Denver, roaring up the Rockies to the crossing at San Joaquin. The crack streamliner of the West Coast Railroad rushes through the dark at 80 miles an hour, destined for a watery grave at the bottom of Schooner Canyon Lake. Meanwhile, a strange figure hurtles through space, back the way he came. But will he be in time? Can he drop the injured men, warn the authorities, and get back to save the train without revealing who he is? Thrills, suspense, climax... Tune in and follow the story of Superman. Be with us again for the next thrilling installment of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. And now, faster than a speeding bullet, Condensed Bat Soup proudly presents the next chapter of our story, Menace to the Silver Clipper, which was originally broadcast on February 23rd, 1940. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. Superman! And now, Superman. Events on the main line of the West Coast Railroad are rapidly reaching a climax. Feeding west, the Silver Clipper pours up the slope of the Rockies heading for San Joaquin Pass. Disasters, sudden and unseen, lies waiting for it in Schooner Canyon Lake. While Superman wings his way through space, searching desperately for the nearest mountain town, he finds it, drops down from the sky and enters the office of the local chief of police in his character of Huck Kent, reporter. Listen. Well, you talk good. I'll say that for you, Kent. Well, if you don't believe me, telephone my paper and ask for verification. Or call the division superintendent of the West Coast Railroad at Denver. The Silver Clipper is a West Coast train, isn't it? Well, it is now, but it won't be long. I tell you, if something isn't done in a hurry... Then it's... okay, but how are you going to prove it? Suppose I get up there to the San Joaquin and pull in a couple of guys. Well, how am I going to prove anything? Well, I'll, I'll attend to that. You know the Circle Y Ranch? Sure. What about it? A couple of injured train men crawled in there a while ago. They were on that missing locomotive and tender. They were, huh? Wait, you don't mean it. I certainly do mean it. Hmm. If you get those two men I told you about, the one who calls himself the Wolf and his henchman Kino, the mystery is solved. Well, say, you begin to make sense, young fella. By God, I'll do it. What's your plan? Get a fast car and head for the crossing at San Joaquin. Yeah. You know the old Schooner Canyon Junction? Well, I reckon I can find it, even in the dark. All right, get up there and hide. If we don't catch them red-handed, it's no good. That's what I'm waiting for. Okay, Kent. Say, that is your name, ain't it? But, hey, hey, where are you going? I want to call my paper back east. Tell them to hold the presses for a big break. I'll pay for the call. Operator. Operator. I, uh, I want Perry White, managing editor of the Daily Planet. Yes. Rush it, please. I'll hold the line. Hello, White speaking. Mr. White, this is Clark Kent. Kent? Good Lord, man, I thought you were dead. Where have you been all day? Tied up in a cellar, but I broke out. Listen, Mr. White, how long before you go to press? Now, wait a minute. Why, I'm going to press right now. Well, hold it, will you? Stop the press? It better be good, Kent. Oh, don't worry, it will be. The big break on the Western Railroad 
story. Kent, are you kidding? You know the warnings on the Silver Clipper? It's coming off tonight. Well, where are you now? In a police station in a little town on the main line. What's going to happen? I don't know, Mr. White, but I know this much. It won't be long. I've got to go now. Will, will you hold the presses? Okay, Kent. You won't regret it. I'll call you the minute I have something. I can't wait. What's all this about a mysterious flying figure? Something called a Superman? Oh, forget it, Mr. White. Somebody's pipe dream, huh? There's been a lot of talk. Well, forget it. I, I'm in a position to know. So long, Mr. White. Good luck, Kent. I'll be waiting. Hey, stop the press. Replay coming. Top column on the Western Railroad. Get a rewrite back. Superman, eh? I should say I am in a position to know. Huck, not much time with a wolf waiting there at the canyon. If I don't get back in time to fix that switch, 40 miles more, faster. Listen, boss, let's get out of this tunnel. I don't like it. Not too long to wait now. What's the time, Kino? Oh, five minutes more. She's on time. She was on time at Creedville. Come on, boys, let's beat it. A very sound idea, Kino. In five minutes or something less, this tunnel will be a most unhealthy place. What do you think will happen? Something resembling the end of the world, Kino. Screaming brakes, rending steel, bellows of steam. Yes, decidedly we should move, my friend. Come. Where to? Down to the tracks where we can observe the switch. Close to the scene of action, but not too close. Listen, are you sure they can't stop in time? Downhill at 90 miles an hour? Impossible, Kino. What if she leaves the rails at the switch? What if she can't take the current? A chance, but not likely. Come on, man, get moving. Hey, someone's coming. Hey, hey, boss, you better get out of that. She's whistling for the highway. Quick, Kino. Minutes count now. There's the train. Traveling fast, all right. Ah, there's the junction. Got a minute, maybe less. Now then, what have those devils done to the tracks? Ah, broken the seals and thrown the switch, eh? Well, it won't take long to fix that. And I'll just rip up a few of the old branch line rails. Ah, just to be sure. Ah, there, that ought to settle things. Well, well, look who's coming. Hey, boss. Who's that guy down by the switch? Look, he's tearing up the track. Well, well, what are you doing? Where's your gun? Shoot, shoot. Don't worry, boss. I'll get him. I never missed yet. <laughs> Got him, boss. No, no, you didn't. There he is. You missed him, you fool. Never mind, boss. I won't miss him this time. Hey, you. He know what's the matter with you. All right, then, rush him. The train. Here comes the train. Get that man away from there, Kino. Boss, beat it, beat it. It's him. I see him now. It's the man with the red cape. The train, the train. Run, Kino, run. Make the car. Made it. Through the switch just in time. Go on, Silver Clipper. I ball for Salt Lake City in the West. Now then, after those lads in the car. Watch it, you two. Here I come. I tell you, it was him. The guy in the red cape, the, 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 the Superman. Shut up, you know. Whoever it was, I'll settle with him. He threw the switch back and saved the train. Faster, boss, faster. Get away from here. Keep your head, Kino. There's something about this I don't understand. Boss, look out. He's right behind us. He's over our heads. Look, look. What, what is that thing? He's down there in the road ahead. He's standing there. Look out. We're going to crash. Sorry to disturb you, gentlemen. Don't hey. try to get away. Who are you? Put me down. Please, let me go. Let me go. In one moment. Just now, while I hold both of you with one hand, I've got something else to do. That car, for instance. You won't need it again. Where you're going, have to make this accident look convincing. The car. Look what he's doing to the car, boss. He's wrecking it. There. No one will ever ride in that again. Hello. Here comes a car. Heard the crash. Must be the police. Well, so long, gentlemen. I'm leaving you now. And if you ever wreck another train or try to, think what you've missed this time. Goodbye. Uh, 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 hey, hey. 
Here's where that crash was. There's a couple of guys lying on the road. Hey, grab them, boys. Why, I wouldn't wonder if they were the fellas that newspaper man was talking about. They tried to make a getaway and cracked up. Well, look where their car got to. Man, life looks like a cyclone hit it. Yes, doesn't it? Uh, or that, uh, that Superman they keep talking about. Well, Good evening, Chief. Say, there you are. Why, it's the reporter. Well, howdy, Mr. Kent. Well, I, uh, I see you got them all right. Yes, but there was no train wreck. I guess we scared them off. Keep huh? them off. Yes. Keep them off. Huh? We done it. Put me in jail. Put me anywhere. But don't let that guy touch me again. He just came flying through the air. Say, he's nuts off his head. But that was a confession if I ever heard one. Yes. And if you'll drag the bottom of Schooner Canyon Lake, you'll find that missing engine and tender. What? And don't forget those two trainmen at the Circle Y Ranch. They'll be your star witnesses. Well, congratulations, Chief. You've caught the train wreckers all right. Uh, and thanks to you, Mr. Kent. Well, hey, hey, where are you going? Well, I've got to get back to town. My paper's waiting for the story. See you later, Chief. Well, well, Kent, come on in. Well, it's fine to see you back. You've certainly made good in a big way. Thanks, Mr. White. And to show you what I think of you, I'm going to start you right out on another assignment. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That's the best news I could possibly hear. Now, wait till you do hear it, my boy. There are one or two things I want to ask you about first. Yes, sir. I know it sounds foolish, but all these rumors about the mysterious flying figure clad in a red cape and all that. Do uh, you know anything about this uh, Superman? Do I know anything about this Superman? <laughs> Oh, Chief, what a silly question. All right, all right, let it go. Now, I want to talk to you about your next assignment. Uh, just pull up your chair. Yes, sir. Oh, confound it, I told him not to disturb me. Set your own. Why? You've caught the wolf, my friend, for all the good it will do you. The wolf has a master, and the master speaks to you now. Here, what the, say, who is this? Uh, Kent, Kent, get over here. My compliments, Mr. Kent, on your first. And last performance. What's he mean? You and your newspaper have interfered with my plans. Very well, my friend. In exactly 24 hours at this time tomorrow, you and your newspaper will be blown to a thousand fragments. This is the yellow mask. Goodbye. Hey, hey, you! Wait, wait! Come back here! Who was that man? Find him! Find him and trace him! Find him! Whose was the eerie voice calling Editor White on the phone? Who or what is the yellow mask? And can Clark Kent, without revealing his identity as Superman, solve the mystery in the newspaper office? Terrible, deadly danger threatens the Daily Planet. Superman has 24 hours' time. Tune in and follow the story. Now, don't forget... Next time, the beginning of Superman's latest adventure. Tune in and don't miss it. Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. And now, it's a condensed Bat Soup Extra Helping, because not all heroes wear capes. This Extra Helping features a delightful episode of The Great Gildersleeve, in which Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve decides to try his hand at detective work. This is The Haunted House, as originally broadcast on April 20th, 1949. The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. 
And now, in many states, you can buy this delicious parquet margarine in yellow quarter-pound sticks. Yes, the same spread that tastes so good now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow and ready to serve. That's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's going on in the great Gildersleeve household this fine spring morning. The great man and his little family are just finishing breakfast when they hear the familiar sound of the mailman's whistle. Mailman! I'll get it! I'll get it for me! Oh, my goodness. How can one small boy make so much noise? Oh, it just comes natural to little Leroy. Yes. Hey, up! Leroy, it isn't necessary to shut... I got a package, a big one, too. Package? Oh, yes, yes, I've been expecting that. Let me have it, my boy. What's in it, Unky? You'll see. It's something I sent away for. What? Is it a reducing set? Yeah, Leroy? <laughs> of course not. Gee, Unc, tell us what it is. Well, you'll just have to wait till I open it, my boy. <laughs> it's sort of a surprise. It is? Mm-hmm. Gee, hurry up. Mm-hmm. There. What do you think of that, Leroy? Gosh, a detective set. Yeah? Look at all that stuff. <laughs> pair of handcuffs, fingerprint powder, disguises, yeah. and a book on crime detection. That's right. It's from the Eagle Eye Detective Institute. Do you like it, my boy? I sure do. Gee, thanks a lot, Uncle. I've always wanted one of these. Well, uh, this isn't for you, Leroy. It's for me. What? <laughs> oh, Uncle. Well, <laughs> since I caught that bank robber a few weeks ago, I sort of got interested in this sort of thing. You thought I might take up crime detection as a hobby. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I happened to see this detective course advertised in a magazine. As... Uncle Mort, how ridic can you get? Now, it isn't ridic- ridiculous at all. No harm in learning about these things. You never know. It might come in handy. How? Hmm? Well, who knows? Someday the police department might call on me to help solve some big case. Why, I might become known as the Great Gildersleuth. <laughs> <laughs> heaven's sake. Gee, I thought the set was gonna be for me. Uh, don't look so glum, Leroy. You can be a little detective, too. You can be my assistant. I can? Oh, boy. Sure. When the case comes up, we'll solve it together. Gee, I wish a burglar would break in our house. Then we can catch him, Monk. Uh, well, let's not rush things, my boy. <laughs> you children better run along to school now. Okay. <laughs> goodbye, Uncle Moore. Uh, goodbye, my dear. Detectives. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Unc. Uh, goodbye, Leroy. Hi, old cars! Call me old cars! <laughs> Little Leroy. Well, I bet I'll have a lot of fun with this detective set. Certainly looks fascinating, all right. Wonder if Humphrey Bogart has one of these. <laughs> Let's see now. Fingerprint powder. Sprinkle powder on surface. Blow away and fingerprints will be disclosed. Yeah, that sounds easy. I'll try it on the table where Leroy was sitting. Should be plenty of fingerprints there. <laughs> See, you just shake it out. You blow it. Well, it works. Look how plain they are. Oh, you still here, Mr. Gilsleeve? Yes, Bertie. What are you doing, Mr. Gilsleeve? I'm just looking at these fingerprints on the table here. Oh. You see how plain they are? Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsleeve, I can't help it if people get fingerprints on things. I keep this house as clean as I can. Oh, I know that, Bertie. No, sir, I can't help a few finger- fingerprints. This house is keep- kept as clean as I can keep it. Yeah, but, Bertie, I was looking for fingerprints. Well, if you look for them, you'll find them, but I keep this house as clean as I can. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bertie, you don't understand. This is the way we investigate crime. Well, a few fingerprints ain't no crime. I keep this house as clean as I can. <laughs> But, Bertie, I'm just being a detective. It don't take no detective to find fingerprints around here. I can show you a lot of them, but I keep this house as clean as I can. (laughs) Hmm. Guess I'd better pick up my fingerprint powder and blow. (laughs) Good morning, TV. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Peavy, have you any crimes you want solved? Okay. <laughs> well, you haven't heard about it yet, but I'm taking up the study of scientific crime detection. Oh, is that so? Yep. 
I've got myself a lot of detective equipment, and I'm all ready for business. Well, in that case, you might be interested in something that happened this morning. Oh? What's that, Peavy? There was a big holdup down at the fire department. A holdup? Yes, the fire chief's pants were held up by a pair of suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Held up by a pair of suspenders, get it? Yes. Hmm. Peavy, you may think this is funny, but someday you might need my services. What? Well, just suppose your drugstore was robbed. Or suppose somebody kidnapped Mrs. Peavy. Kidnapped Mrs. Peavy? Yes. Do you know somebody who wants to kidnap <laughs> No, of course not. Oh. But just suppose somebody did take her away. You'd look for a detective, wouldn't you? No, I'd look for Miss Peavy. <laughs> but Peavy, I'm a detective. I could follow the clues. All right, you follow the clues and I'll follow Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> well, you can laugh at me if you want to, Peavy. But I bet the FBI would be crazy to have a detective like me. Well, now, I... Yes, they certainly would. <laughs> Marjorie? Yes, Uncle Mort, what is it now? Yeah, this book on crime detection is certainly interesting, all right. Yes, I know. You've been telling me that ever since dinner. I'm trying to do my homework. Oh, pardon me, of course. Go right ahead, my dear. Thank you. Marjorie? Yes, Uncle Mort? Yeah, write something on a piece of paper. What? I want to get a sample of your handwriting. What for? Well, there's a chapter here on analyzing personality through handwriting. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Just write anything. Your name. Oh, all right. There. Thank you. Now, let's see here. Small letters crowded together, slant to the left. Hmm, that's funny. What's funny? According to this, you're 50 years old, a pickpocket, and you have a black mustache. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Must have got something wrong. Well, I hope so. Anki, I've got to get this homework done. I'm going upstairs. Good night, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, good night, Miss Miller. <laughs> uh, wish Leroy would get back from that weenie roast so I could try this out on him. Yes, sir, I'll bet this... I'll get it, Bertie. Now, well, good evening, Gilda. Uh, hello, Judge. Come in. Thank you. Well, Gilda, Peavy tells me you're a super sleuth now. Well... I must say, in that dressing gown, you do look like a famous detective. Oh? <laughs> Sherlock Holmes? No, the fat man. You... <laughs> Very funny, you old goat. Sit down. Now, Gilday, what is all this nonsense? It's no nonsense. I'm taking up the hobby of scientific crime detection, that's all. Oh? Well, I know a case you could work on right now, Gilday. You do? What's that? There was a murder committed in an automobile this morning right at 2nd and Main. A murder in an automobile? Yes, a fella choked his throttle and killed his motor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Judge, with those old jokes, you and Peavy ought to go into television. Well, maybe we should. No. <laughs> oh, Leroy! Right here, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Judge. Unc. What's the matter, my boy? There's a ghost out there. What? Where? In that old house out by the mill pond. I heard it. Now, my boy, you probably just imagined it. No, I didn't. Piggy heard it, too. Us kids were coming home from the wiener roast, and we went by that haunted house, and... Leroy, there's no such thing as a haunted house. Well, this one is. I suppose you mean the old Willoughby house, Leroy. Yeah. We were just going by there. It was all dark and everything, and all of a sudden, the door opened, and we heard footsteps in there. Like this. Well, maybe somebody's living there. Gilda, nobody has lived in that house for 20 years. Not since crazy old Henry Willoughby died there. Oh, yes. And then we heard a moan, like this. Oh, my goodness. A ghost. That's silly, Leroy. Well, there have been a lot of stories about that house, Gilda. Some people claim they've seen old Willoughby's ghost roaming through the place at night. It's easy to see how it might frighten some people. Well, it wouldn't frighten me. That's what I told the kids, Unc. I told him you were a detective and nothing could scare you. Why, of course. I told him you'd walk right in that whole haunted house any old time. Absolutely. I told him you'd go right out there tonight. Pos <laughs> tonight? Sure. Well, it might be better, Leroy, if I went out there in the daytime. 
You can see better then. <laughs> oh, why don't you go now and I can go with you? Well, uh, you're not scared, are you, Gildy? A big detective like you? Why, of course not. Then why don't you go? All right, Hooker, I will. Oh, boy! But, Gildy, aren't you afraid to go out there? Why should I be? After looking at you all these years, a ghost would look good. <laughs> Gildy! Goodbye, you old ghost. I mean, old goat. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. <laughs> sunk. Yes, I see it. Well, shall we get out, Unc? Huh? Get out? Oh, yes, of course. <coughs> Pretty dark out here at night. Yeah. House does look a little spooky, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I guess we ought to go a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> Sure scary, isn't it? Huh? Well, it's a little dark and lonesome out here, but there's really nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Leroy, what was that? Just a screech owl, Unc. Oh? Must have the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Screechy. <laughs> Stay close to me, my boy. You're probably pretty frightened. All right. We'll have to go through this gate. Sounds like Judge Hooker clearing his throat. <laughs> Unc. Yes? This is where we heard the ghost. Huh? We were standing right where you're standing when it happened. Right where I'm standing? Yeah. And all of a sudden the door opened. And we heard those footsteps... And that scary sound. You did? Well, Leroy, I told you there's no such thing as a ghost. You just imagine the whole thing. Why, how could anything like it? Uh... Hunk! The door! It's opening! Yeah. <laughs> Footsteps! <laughs> a ghost! Well, after this, don't believe everything I say. Come on, Leroy, run. Mr. Wall, this is some block we live in. How's that, Bertie? Well, practically every woman in this block is a good cook. Now, take Miss Simpson. No woman can broil steaks better than her. And Miss Salsa, her specialty is hot breads. Casserole dishes like baked shrimp is what Miss McKendry does best. That's the way it is up and down the whole block. Every one of them's a good cook. And every one of them uses parquet margarine as a spread and for cooking, too. Well, that's not surprising, Bertie. Parquet is so nutritious and after Mr. all... Mr. Wall said the reason our block is a parquet block is because parquet margarine tastes so good. It's economical, too. Costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. That's right. But economy is as economy does, I say. And what that parquet margarine does is taste so good. Why, sure. Parquet is made from the selected products of American farms. So I think that more and more women in every town in America are going to use parquet margarine. They like it because it's nutritious. Because it's economical. But mostly, Mr. Wall, because it tastes so good. Right you are, Bertie. That's the plain truth about parquet, the delicious margarine made by Kraft. And remember, in many states, you can now buy parquet margarine in yellow quarter-pound sticks. Last night, the great Gildersleeve set out to prove to Leroy that there's no such thing as a haunted house. But while he was out at the mysterious Willoughby place, a strange thing happened. First, the door opened. Then there were hollow footsteps. And then a weird, ghostly sound.
What did the great man do? Well, he ran away. It's morning now. We find him telling Marjorie all about it. I tell you, Marjorie, I heard those sounds just as plain as anything. Oh, sure. Well, I did. And Leroy heard it, too. Uncle Mort, why don't you admit it? It was dark and scary out there, and you imagined those things, that's all. I did not. And then you ran away. My big, brave detective. <laughs> now, Marjorie. More coffee, Mr. Gilsey? Bertie, you believe me, don't you? What, Miss Gilsey? I did hear something out there last night. Yes, sir. There's something going on in that house. Yes, sir. I wouldn't get scared about nothing. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the use? I tell you, Judge, there's something peculiar about that house. Oh, of course. Well, there is. I'm standing there, and then I heard this strange sound. Strange sound. It was probably your knees knocking together. It was not. Well, I know another place that's haunted, Gildy. Where's that? Your upper story. There's been nobody home there for years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it ain't the commish Hello, Floyd I want a haircut Okay, hop right up in the chair uh, uh, Well, commish Heard any strange noises lately? <laughs> okay, Floyd Hey, commish What? Boom! <laughs> Floyd, just cut my hair. Okay. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> Only kidding, Commiss. You know, I don't blame you for running away last night. I'd have run, too. You would? Sure. Then you believe me, Floyd, huh? You think I did hear something out there? Sure. You don't think there's a ghost in that house, do you? No. Nope. Something worse than that. A dangerous criminal. A criminal? Yep. Probably a counterfeiter. What? Well, that's what those guys always do. Pick out some place like a haunted house so nobody will come near them. They do? Sure. I'll bet this fella's out there right now, grinding out $10 bills. Yeah. Oh, well, could be. Sure, that's your big chance, Commish. Hmm? Everybody's laughing at you now, but if you was to catch this guy, you'd be the Dick Tracy of Summerfield. Yeah. Probably get a big reward, too. Maybe 500 bucks. 500? You think so? Sure. If I was you, I'd go out there and investigate, tonight. By George Floyd, I'll do it. I'll show the judge and everybody who's afraid. Atta boy, Kamish. I'll be home rooting for you. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. And Kamish. Yes? Uh, you might cut little Floydy Munson in on that reward. <laughs> well, we'll see, Floyd. I'll catch that counterfeiter if it kills me. Whoop, what am I saying? <laughs> I better go see the chief of police. <laughs> Now, Commissioner, you don't know there's a counterfeiter out in that house. Well, Chief, there's somebody out there. What about those footsteps I heard? Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, those footsteps were probably just a rat running around. Well, if it was a rat, he was wearing shoes. <laughs> That's very funny. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, yes. Well, I'm going out after this fellow tonight, Chief. Are you coming with me or not? Well... Commissioner, I guess I shouldn't let you know. Now you're talking. This fellow might be a dangerous character, all right. Naturally. He's probably a killer. Well, I can't let you face a killer without any protection. That's well. Then you're going out with me? No, I'm going to give you a permit to carry a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, not at all, Commissioner. Sign right here. What a chief of police. <laughs> Well, I guess I'd better get out to that house. Getting kind of late. Hope I can sneak downstairs without waking the family. Oh, better turn off the light. I'll tiptoe. Hi, Uncle! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leroy. Where are you going? Out to the Willoughby house. What? That isn't a ghost out there, Leroy. It's a dangerous criminal, and I'm going to get him. Really? Gee, can I go out there with you? No, my boy. You go on back to bed. It's too risky. He's probably a killer. Gosh, you're sure brave, Unc. Well, some people don't think so. 
Well, I'm going to show them. Hello, boy, Unc. Well, my boy, I'll be back in a little while. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> soon, I'm afraid. Guess I'll have to go through with it now. Me and my big mouth. Wonder if that fellow is a killer. Well, I just won't think about it. Get some music on the radio. Cheer myself up. <laughs> well, Flatfoot, I caught you snooping around here, didn't I? Huh? Well, you made a big mistake coming out here. You're not getting out of this place alive. Mm. I'm gonna drill you so full of holes, you'll look like a piece of cheese. I hope it's Kraft. <laughs> well, big boy, here's a present for you. Oh! <laughs> Think I'll try another program. <laughs> here, not too close to the house, and I'll sneak up on him. That's what it said in the book, chapter two. Well, come on, Gellersleeve, you wanted to be a detective. Wish the moon would come out. What's that? <laughs> My heart's pounding so loud, it sounds like somebody's following me. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Somebody is following me. Wonder who it is. Nobody out here but me and the killer. The killer. He's after me. He's gaining on me. This is the end, Gillisleeve. Goodbye, Marjorie. Goodbye, Leroy. You can have my detective set. Hey, Commissioner. Yeah. Oh, Chief Gates. What are you doing out here? Well, Commissioner, I thought it over and decided it wasn't right to let you come out here all alone. Oh? After all, we're fellow jolly boys. Oh, thanks, Chief. I'm certainly glad you're here. Well, glad to be here. Well, Commissioner, let's get on with the manhunt. Manhunt? Oh, yes. Just stay right behind me. Good idea. Here's the gate. Shh. Uh, mustn't let him hear us. He might take a shot at us. He... Oh, yes. Be careful going up these steps. I will. <laughs> Stumbled. Yeah. Say, kind of spooky in there, isn't it? Sure is. Well, well, guess we ought to go in. Yeah, guess we should. The door's open. I'll tell you, Commissioner. You go in and I'll stay out here and be the lookout. Huh? <laughs> Why can't I be the lookout? Oh, no, no. That takes experience. You go in and flush him out. Flush him out? That's right. And I'll leap on him when he, when he runs out the door. Well, look before you leap. The fellow running out might be me. Okay. Go on in, Commissioner. Well, all right. Stop pushing me. Well, don't worry. I'll be right here. Well, don't lock the door. Dark. Can't see a thing in here. Killer's probably hiding someplace, ready to spring at me. I'll just feel around. Oop. <laughs> Feels like a face. Chin, big nose, ears, antlers. <laughs> A moose head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess he isn't in this room. Better try the hall. <laughs> Cobwebs. <laughs> Wish this floor wouldn't creak so loud. He's liable to be. <laughs> hmm. 
There it is. I'm getting out of here. No, I'm not. He's not going to scare me. I'll show him. Oh, brother. <laughs> Sounds like it's coming from that room there. There's a light under the door. I'll get my gun ready here. What did I do with that permit? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could stop shaking. Well, I'll sneak up on him. Well, this is it, Gildersleeve. The killer's just outside this door. Courage now. I'll take him by surprise. Put up your hands! I've got you! Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Phoebe! <laughs> Phoebe, what are you doing here? Oh, I come out here several nights a week to practice. Practice? Yes, I just bought this cello, and Mrs. Peavy won't let me play it in the house. Oh? Oh, brother, I don't blame her. <laughs> well, nobody can hear me way out here. Of course, I'm just a beginner. Oh, my goodness, and I thought you were a counterfeiter. How's that? Playing a cello in a place like this. Peavy, you're the biggest boob in Summerfield. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, <laughs> that... <laughs> Come on in, Chief, and bring your harmonica. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Here's news. You can now get yellow parquet in all states where laws permit. Yes, parquet, the same delicious spread with a wonderful flavor, now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow. You'll find yellow parquet costs a little more, largely because of the federal coloring tax, but it's a real saving for you in time and trouble. Try the new yellow parquet in quarter-pound sticks. Remember, where state laws permit, you can get this delicious spread, golden yellow, ready to serve. Of course, you can still buy white parquet at the low economy price. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. All right, fellas. Come on, jolly boys, let's sing it. For it's always fair when good fellows get together. Getting pretty good on that cello. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good night, folks. You like this pleasant, quick way of making leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard and you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors and boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft's prepared mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. That'll wrap up another edition of Condensed Bat Soup, featuring the third part of the radio origin story of the Man of Steel. Next time, we'll begin a brand new storyline. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tell your friends to subscribe to Bat Soup on their favorite podcatcher. We can also be found on YouTube and Facebook. Bat Soup is also a proud member of the Moonlight Audio Theater family of podcasts and can be heard as part of the Mutual Audio Network's Saturday Story Circle. Like what you're hearing? You can support Bat Soup at buymeacoffee.com. Surf into buymeacoffee.com slash batsoup. That's B-A-T-S-U-P-E. Learn more at bat-supe.podbean.com. We'll see you next time for another exciting edition of Condensed Bat Soup as we begin a series of adventures sometimes known as the Unity House Stories. Until then, up, up, and away! This is Superman, gang. I want to remind you that tomorrow is Election Day, a mighty important day to every good citizen. Now, of course, you can't vote until you're old enough. But here's something you can do. Help make sure your mother and father can get out to vote. 
You could help with the dishes or around the house, run errands, and show your parents that you're interested, too, in the right and duty of every American citizen to cast his vote on Election Day. <laughs> 